Since the beginning of their 16-year playoff drought, the Sacramento Kings have never held a defensive rating higher than 19th. Although they've occasionally found success on the offensive end, the Kings have never even held an average defense together during this stretch. We've already talked about the Kings' lethal offense, and that unit is still top 5 in the NBA today. But the strides this year's Kings team has made on the defensive side of the floor are extremely encouraging to say the least. Their defensive rating on the season is 112, which is 19th in the league, tying their best mark over the drought. But over the last 10 games, the Kings have had the 5th best defense in the entire NBA. There's been a lot of different factors that have contributed to this defensive surgence, and I'll do my best to try and cover them. In order to hold one of the top defenses in the league, you're going to need buy-in from all of your players, and it's very clear that Mike Brown's messages resonate with his team. On this empty corner pick and roll, Aiton gets a wide open layup at the basket when no one tags him on the roll. In this situation, it's Terrence Davis's job as the low man to step up and tag Aiton on the roll, and ideally, he would take a charge here. And following this error, Mike Brown will instantly call a timeout to instruct Terrence of his duties and where he should have been on the court. Just watch what happens next time that Davis is the low man in this situation. He's already in his spot above the restricted area before Aiton's roll, so when Aiton doesn't stop, Davis is in position to draw a charge and just look at Mike Brown's reaction. The Kings rely on their low man a lot in their usual pick and roll coverages. Sabonis will typically play at the level of screens, here he's asked with briefly containing Zach Levine. Again he's brought up above the arc, and he has to do his best to avoid letting the guard turn the corner on him. This kind of coverage worked for the Kings because Sabonis has incredible mobility and hip flexibility for a big. Watch out when Zach Levine is getting downhill here, Sabonis is able to flip his hips and change direction, helping funnel Levine into a difficult pull up jumper. This kind of movement from a big makes it much harder for guards to snake screens getting to their spots because Domas can hold his own in these moments. The Kings don't play deeper drop coverage because Sabonis is not a true rim protector, so there's a lot more pressure put on the backline rotations. On this pick and roll, Sabonis is at the level again, with Harrison Barnes as the low man near the basket. When Levine makes this skip pass, the weak side guys have to X out, with KZ Akpala taking away the first pass, allowing time for Barnes to recover on the swing. Since the rotations are nearly perfect, the Bulls often stalls out. On this play, Harrison Barnes briefly tags Zubats, while Keegan creeps over as a low man. With Sabonis in front, there is simply no room for Reggie Jackson to hit Zubats on the roll. The Kings do their best to discourage attackers altogether, again since they lack a true shot blocker. Not only here is Harrison in position as the low man, Fox is one pass away yet really gapping Buddy Hill's drive. If teams aren't properly spaced, like the Suns right here, these pick and rolls will almost never create an advantage. Keegan plays this role here on the tag perfectly. Not only does he take away the role from Zubots, he reads John Wall's eyes who was looking for the skip pass. In the past, De'Aaron Fox has developed a reputation as a lackadaisical off-ball defender who falls asleep way too often. But now just look at his focus when operating as the low man. He meets Derrick Jones Jr. on the short roll, then anticipates the pass to the corner, and that's going the other way. Watching De'Aaron buy in on the defensive end has been one of the most fun developments of the season. He's always had the physical tools to do so, and now he's combining that with an improved focus and discipline. I love here how he gets low on his closeout, cuts Buddy's initial drive off, just to strip the ball after Buddy spin to change direction. One of Mike Brown's main defensive philosophies is never giving up the middle of the floor, which leads to the Kings icing a lot of ball screens. Playing ice just means forcing the ball handler away from using the screen. So Davion has his hips opened up to the nearest sideline here, which forces Levine away from a middle high ball screen. In these instances, the pick and pop is usually going to be available for offenses, but a long mid-range shot like this is exactly what the Kings want to encourage. Davion Mitchell was just so good at naturally icing screens to begin with. His anticipation of screens is so good, he oftentimes just dissuades players from ever using them. Davion himself might be a top 5 point of attack defender in all of basketball. His lateral speed and screen navigation are the definition of elite, just hounding and harassing every ball handler who dares to challenge him. I mean, just look at Davion switch onto 4 different pacers when defending against their dribble drive offense. The Kings also really love to send some early baseline help as another way to discourage shots at the basket. You can see here how Malik is shading his man towards the baseline, embracing the no middle mindset of Mike Brown. So when John Wall attacks that way, Metu is able to meet him before Wall reaches the paint. 
when Marcus Morris tries to attack baseline here, Davion helps force the spin back to the middle where Chemezi is in good position to contest the cutting Batum. Even when the Clippers have a more spread out floor, KZ comes from the weak side corner to cut off Reggie Jackson's drive and that's going to result in a turnover. KZ is another guy who's made a massive impact defensively as of late. His defense on DeMar DeRozan in the Bulls game was truly some of the best I've seen all season. KZ cuts off DeMar's first drive to the basket before taking a massive blow to the chest without losing an inch. And you can just see how visibly defeated DeMar is after this. When Chemezi Metu is in the game at the 5, the Kings will mix up their defensive coverages slightly. Metu will play a bit more of a traditional drop coverage where he's able to use his verticality and leaping ability to help alter shots. Look at how he's able to use his length to deflect his pass to Drummond on the roll. There will also be times periodically when the Kings will play a switch everything scheme with Chemezi at the 5. He isn't the quickest laterally, but he's been getting better at at least offering some resistance against quicker guards. The Kings in general have been much better about communicating and their switches have been seamless. DeMar gets the switch that he wants here against the smaller Fox, but De'Aaron isn't going to even let DeRozan have a chance of backing him down. There's been no better indicator of the Kings improvement defensively than how the team has performed in scramble situations or when plays break down. A brief miscommunication between Herder and Sabonis on this ghost screen leaves Buddy unattended to on the perimeter. De'Aaron recognizes the 3 point threat that Buddy is, stepping up to help take away a shot. And while this is happening, Harrison Barnes switches onto De'Aaron's man who was cutting in order to save a basket. Here when KZ gets beat on his closeout, Sabonis instantly offers help on the drive while Herder sinks in on Zubat. And although Herder may get beat on this closeout attempt as well, the shot clock is winding down and he's helping funnel his man into multiple help defenders. Now the Kings are far from a perfect defense, but there is no denying the massive strides they made on that side of the floor. I plan on making separate videos covering some of the weaknesses of the defense as well as some of the other types of coverages that we've seen them run. But that's all I have for now and I'll see you guys next time.